Hey guys, welcome back to the Calibre Tools and DIY channel. If you ever want to test the voltage coming out of your sockets, you're going to need one of these, a multimeter or voltmeter. Stick around and let's see how it's done. Okay, so testing the voltage that's coming out of your wall sockets is going to require a multimeter or voltmeter. Same thing, okay? That's what this is. Now, the type of voltage coming out of your wall sockets in a house is either 120 or 240. All that means is that the power coming into the house through the circuit breaker is permitted to serve either a 120 volt load or a 240 volt load or a combination of the two. The type of current coming out of a standard wall socket is going to be AC current alternating current. So if we look at our multimeter, we're going to see a couple of V's here. You have VDC and you have VAC. We're going to go with the VAC, AC standing for alternating current. We don't want to venture into this range here. This is amps AC, okay? We're dealing with volts AC, the voltage coming out of the socket, okay? So we see two values here. We see 600 and 200 volts, right? We're looking for 120, so we know we don't have to go past 200. So we're just going to turn our dial to 200. 600 volts is too high. We're not looking for something that high. So don't make the mistake of putting your dial there. Know what voltage you're looking for, then look at the values offered on the dial and see which one is higher and closest to that desired voltage that you're looking for. So let's turn our dial from the off position to 200. And we also want to connect our red lead to the red port. It's color coded here. And you want to look for that V for voltage on the port as well. So we put that in there. And we want to connect our black lead to the common port, C-O-M. That port over there is for amps. Now, if you look at the standard socket today, you see two slots and you have a U-shaped hole here. The smaller slot is always gonna be the hot, okay? That provides the power. The larger one is gonna be the neutral. The neutral returns the power back to the source. Remember, electricity needs a path back to its source. So the power is coming out of this slot, the hot, which is gonna power your device or appliance as it runs through it, then that power is gonna return back to the source through the neutral wire. And of course we have the ground and that also returns power back to the source just in case the hot happens to touch the metal casing inside the socket or if there's any kind of short or something like that. In older homes, you only had two slots, the hot and the neutral. Those aren't really allowed right now. There has to be a ground to provide power back to the source. As you can see, this is a metal casing, but it's not always metal. Nowadays, they have plastic housings for the socket. Okay, so let's do some testing. When we grab our multimeter leads, we always wanna grab them from the insulated portion, from the rubber portion, and that's this area right here. You never wanna grab them from the prongs, the actual prongs there. The first thing you wanna do is insert the black prong into the neutral slot first, okay? You don't want to insert the red into the hot first because that'll energize this prong and it can actually shock you, okay? So you don't want to do that. You want to make sure you insert the black prong into the neutral first. Then you insert the red into the hot. So we get exactly 120 volts coming out of this socket. So that's an accurate reading for this wall socket. Now, if we want to know if the ground has a complete path back to the breaker panel, we want to test it this way. We'll take our black probe stick it into the ground, then stick the red into the hot. And once again, we get about 120 volts. So we know our ground path is good. Now, one way to test for a short or incorrect wiring is to go from neutral to ground. So you stick your black into the neutral, and then you stick your red into the ground and that's what you should get, zero. If you get a 120 volt reading, then it's possibly a short or incorrect wiring. But as it stands, it says zero as it should be. Another way to test for a proper ground path is to put the neutral on the screw right here on the socket and then place the hot in the hot slot. If you get about 120 volts, then you have a good ground path. 
Appliances like microwaves, refrigerators, dishwashers, phone chargers, vacuum cleaners, lamps only require 120 volts to run. But when you're talking about ovens, stove ranges, dryers, water heaters, central air conditioners, welding machines, they require 240 volts. That's twice the amount. And those sockets look a little bit different. Here's an example of a 240 volt outlet. In this case, we've got to set our dial to 600 volts AC. Okay, so what's the difference between the two types of outlets? A standard 120 volt outlet contains one 120 volt wire and a neutral wire, and it should have a ground wire today. A 240 volt outlet has two 120 volt wires and a neutral wire. Older buildings have three prong 240 volt outlets, but nowadays they have outlets with four prongs and a ground wire. We'll see that a little bit later. The extra prong is there to provide additional safety from electrical shock. And the four prong 240 volt sockets take care of any compatibility issues if you happen to buy appliances that need a 240 volt plug. Here's a quick safety tip, guys. Hold the leads in one hand when you're doing the testing, okay? Put the black in the neutral and the red in the hot with one hand. That'll decrease the risk of electricity running all the way through your body if you happen to get shocked. If you learned something from this video, don't hesitate to hit the like and subscribe button. Matter of fact, just go ahead and hit it right now. This is every week, so you can imagine how good it is. Don't forget to go to Calibrate.com, check out our products, join the email list. See you next time.